grandma. <laughs> we can start with an additional Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A warm greeting to all of you. I'm glad that we have met to talk about our Heavenly Mother. Is there anybody for the first time in Medjugorje? <laughs> well, then I have to start all over again. <laughs> this was my plan, that I share with you what I personally consider as the most important. I mean, the most important of this message is uh, talking about the way I see them. And that you ask whatever you may be interested in. And if I know, I will answer with all my heart. So I'll have to go 40 years back in history. It was June the 24th, 1981. And that's the feast day of St. John the Baptist. And in the village, nobody worked in fields. So Ivanka and me wanted to be alone. As two 15, 14 years old girls. We took a walk along the base of what we call the Apparition Hill today. But at that time there were no houses around. So once we felt tired, we sat down at the base of that hill in a way that Ivanka was facing the hill and I was looking opposite direction. And then in one moment she, she just told me, I think that our lady is on the hill. Just like that. I did not even look. Because for me that was impossible. Because we grew up a lot different from you. We lived in Yugoslavia under communism and we didn't really have freedom of faith. We were allowed to go to Sunday Mass and that was what we could. But the rest of our religious life was within our families only. Because in school we were taught that God did not exist. On the TV it was the same. So only our parents could do that. And therefore every night we prayed rosary together. And our parents really uh, tried to pray a lot with us without talking much about faith to us. Because they were afraid that we as children would speak about that in school and that they could have problems. So that after that moment I never heard about Lourdes or about Fatima. <coughs> we didn't have organized pilgrimages at that time. So that I, I didn't even know that Our Lady could come on earth like that. The way I thought was she is in heaven and we prayed to her. So when Ivanka said to me that she thought that Our Lady was on the hill, I replied to her in a little rude way. So I said, yeah, our lady has nothing else to do and she will come to the two of us. <laughs> so I left her standing there and I wanted to go back home. But reaching the first house in the village, I felt within myself a call. And it was so intense that I simply had to go back. So when I came back, I saw Ivanka on the same spot. And she told me, look now, please. 
and then I saw a woman in a long gray dress holding an infant baby in her arms. Everything was very strange, because nobody climbed the hill. There was no path that we have today, path that was made by pilgrim's feet. And it was strange to see someone in such a long dress with an infant baby in arms up there. Therefore, in that moment, I felt all possible emotions at the same time. Fear, beauty, misunderstanding. And what prevailed within me was simply to run away. So I ran away back home. And at home, I found my grandmother. And I said to her right away that I think that I saw our lady. And she said to me, you better take rosary, go to your room and pray to dear God. And let our lady be where she is in heaven. <clears throat> I did not have strength uh, to debate, to discuss with her. Because I wanted to do exactly like that. To be alone in prayer. Because only in such a way I was able to have peace. The next day I helped my uncles. And I did not have a chance to see other visionaries. But around the time when I saw Our Lady the day before, I felt within myself the same call. And I said to my uncles that I had to go back to the base of the hill because I felt something was calling me. They came along with me to see what was going on. Reaching the base of the hill, uh, here, this is part of the village, both of the where you are, practically half of it was already at the base of the hill. Because every visionary was accompanied by someone. And then we saw Our Lady on the same spot. But this time she did not have baby in her arms. <coughs> So on the day of June the 25th, 1981, was in fact the first time when we approached her. She presented herself to us, and she said, My children, do not be afraid. I am the Queen of Peace. <clears throat> and this is how our daily apparition started. Very shortly we had them on the hill. As I have already told you, that was time of communism. Practically within a few days overnight, police came with the dogs and they occupied the hill. And those who climbed the hill would simply end up in prison. But those first days, Our Lady presented a few miracles. So that almost everyone at Podbot of you was able to see something. So seeing all of this, and knowing us as children, the locals believed us and they helped us. Therefore we had apparition every night on a different spot. So that no one would know ahead of time where we would be that night. Such daily apparitions I had until Christmas of 1982. That is when Our Lady said to me that I would not have her daily apparitions anymore, but that it would be only once a year and every March 18th as long as I live. But she also said that I would have some extraordinary apparitions. And those apparitions started on August the 2nd, 1987. And they lasted on every second day of each month until the 2nd of March 2020. And, and at least the way I comprehend that is that those apparitions were like a prayer for unbelievers. For the difference that Our Lady never says unbelievers. Because if you say for someone that he or she is an unbeliever, 
You have judged that person. But our lady never judges. Instead of that, she says, those who have not feel the love of God yet. And our lady requires our, our help. When she says our help, she doesn't refer only to six visionaries. But help of all those who feel her as mother. Because she says that we are capable to change unbelievers. <clears throat> but only with our prayers and our own example. <clears throat> then our lady asks from us to put in our daily prayers in the first place the prayers for them. <clears throat> because our lady says, when you pray for them, <clears throat> you pray for yourselves and for your own future. Then besides our prayer, Our Lady asks our example. She doesn't ask for us to preach. She would like for us to talk with our own life. So that unbelievers can see God and God's love in us. Because every one of us has an unbeliever. Whether it's in our home, our neighborhood, at our working place. And we have to ask ourselves, does that unbeliever see God and God's love in us? In our actions, in our way of behaving? And that is what our lady says, she is asking example. Not that we talk and preach to others. I mean, I didn't mean with this that our lady just thought that we should be silent. The way I understood it. In the first place we should pray, because when we pray, then Jesus speaks through us. And we will know when it's the right time to say something. But if we do not pray, and we just talk to others, then our words will be empty. And we will do the opposite. Because if you have a chance just once to see tears in Our Lady's eyes because of unbelievers, I'm sure that you would pray from the bottom of your heart. Our Lady asks of us to attend the Holy Mass. And the Holy Mass should be in the first place in our lives. Because at the very beginning of her apparitions, Our Lady said to us, If you have to choose between attending the Holy Mass or seeing me in the apparition, always choose the Holy Mass. Because during the Holy Mass, my son is with you. You see, in all these years of her apparitions, Our Lady never said, Pray and I will give you. But she always says, Pray so that I can pray to my son for you. Jesus is always in the first place. But many pilgrims, when they come to Medjugorje, think that we visionaries are important. <coughs> that it's just enough to say something to us because God will listen to us more than others. But this way of thinking is wrong. Because Our Lady, as Mother, does not have privileged children. For her, we are all just her children. And she chooses us for different missions. She chose six of us in order to convey her messages. But she chose every one of you. Because during an apparition, Our Lady said, Dear children, I invited you. Open your heart, allow me to enter to be able to make you become my apostles. You see, it means that we all have equal same importance for our mother. Personally, I learned that at the very beginning of her apparitions. Because I'm the only one of the six visionaries who was not born here and I was not raised here. 
My parents were from here. But after they got married, uh, they went to Sarajevo to live. So that I was born and raised with them. But I used to come here all the time. Because all my family was here. And when apparition started, as police wanted to stop everything, they, uh, by force they brought me back to Sarajevo. I didn't want that. Because I thought if I go back to Sarajevo, I will not have her apparitions anymore. But nobody asked me anything. Here, the situation was a lot different. Because here, all the people are Croatian Catholics. Even policemen were Croatians. And they did what they had to do. They used to take us, cursed at us, they yelled at us, nothing else. In Sarajevo, the situation was a lot different. In Sarajevo, every single day, the higher level of hierarchy of the police, policemen were coming to pick me up. And remember, I was only 15 years old. And I used to be alone with them. And I never knew whether I would come back. And then I thought, Our Lady would help me. But when I had an apparition, she would tell me the same things that she said to them here. I do not even have to tell you how lonely I felt. Because five of them were here together in a village where people loved them, supported them, uh, and encouraged them. And in Sarajevo, I had only my parents. <clears throat> However, through prayer, I comprehend. For Our Lady, for God, there are no privileged ones. If you have difficulties, take rosary and pray. God will not leave you alone. So when I comprehended this in my heart, everything that was about to come, I was able to endure with much more strength. And if I tell you that in these over 40 years of Our Lady's apparitions, Our Lady never pronounced my name. She never said something to me. Instead, she says, dear children. Which means that for her, I'm the same like everyone else. But if anybody is privileged for our mother, then we're talking about our priest. Because referring to the apparitions that I had on every second day of each month, she never said what they should do. But she always talks about what we should do for them. Our Lady says, they do not need you to judge or criticize them. They need your prayers and your love. Because God will judge them the way they were as priests. But He will judge you the way uh, your relations towards your priest was. And Our Lady says, if you lose respect for your priest, little by little you will lose respect for church and at the end for dear God as well. The same way during apparitions, when Our Lady gives her a blessing to us, she always says, I'm giving you my motherly blessing. But the greatest blessing that you can receive on earth is the blessing that your priest gives you. Because when your priest is blessing you, it is my son, son himself blessing you. And Our Lady also said, only their priestly hands are blessed by my son. That is why I'm kindly asking of you when you come back to your parishes, show what our relation towards our priest should be like. 
And for example, if your parish priest doesn't do the way you think he should do, do not walk around and judge him. You better take rosary and pray to dear God for him. Because that's the way to help him. And not through judging and criticizing. Because in the world that we're living in, people judge and criticize so much. And there is so little of love. And all that he desires that we may be recognized through love. And not to take in our hands what only dear God is supposed to do. Only he can judge. Our Lady also said, referring to the priest, alongside them I will triumph. This means that without our priests, there is no triumph of Our Lady's heart either. Because priests are the only ones who can open the gates of paradise to us. That is why Mediana says, I'm kindly asking of you not to forget this. Because here in Medjugorje, even before apparitions, if a priest would enter into our home, not only the homes of the missionaries in general, every single person in the family would stand up. And nobody would sit down before he sits down. And nobody would start to talk before he starts to talk. Because we know that through him, it is Jesus himself entering our home. That is like presenting our respect. Of course, later on, we would have a normal conversation. We would joke and everything. But it's important to show respect. And to pray for them. Because they need to feel that they are never alone. Our Lady asks from us fasting on bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays. She does not ask fasting from those who are sick. She says that through prayer they will comprehend and uh, know what they can do instead of fasting on bread and water. I will now tell you something what is just my personal opinion. Please do not mix what our lady says and what I say. I will say something about fasting and about prayer. Because if you never prayed rosary so far, if you never fasted twice a week so far, as a sister, I would like to recommend you slowly. Step by step. For example, start with on Friday fasting on meat. Because Catholics never eat meat on Friday. Start in such a way. Or renounce the dinner. Renounce something that you enjoy in eating. And in such a way, start walking with Our Lady. Because many people tell me, you know, I started praying exactly the way Our Lady asked of us, and fast, and then I realized I couldn't do it. That is why I say, start slowly. Grow in prayer. Do as much as you can. And do not waste your time judging your own prayer. Because many people say my, my, my thoughts go astray and things like that. But you just keep on trying to pray better. Because prayer is our conversation with our Father. Sometimes we speak in a nice manner. And sometimes we simply get lost. But do not ever forget that He is your Father. And that He loves you. And that you are important to Him the way you are. And that is why try to pray better. And I will repeat once again, do not waste your time judging yourself. 
Try to be a better person. Because the way I comprehend it, why do we pray and fast? Not that I would be able to say to someone, oh yeah, I prayed four rosaries today. And I do fast twice a week. And then it is not reflected in my daily life. Because through prayer and fasting, I should be able to see the pain of my brother. I should see if my neighbor is uh, hungry. And not to wait for him or her to ask him. But I myself go in silence there and help. I think that this is the reason why we pray and fast. To have an open heart and a lot of love for everyone. Because Jesus is love. Because if we have Jesus, we have love. And we love people. A lady invites us to bring back the prayer in our families. Saying that there is nothing in the world that can unite the family like when family prays together. And our lady says that parents have great responsibility in front of their children. Because parents are those who are supposed to put the roots of faith in their children. And they can do it if they pray together and if they attend the Holy Mass together. Because children do see much more than we can even imagine. Let me just give you an example from my own family. You who are staying here with me. You saw my daughter Veronica. The one who was serving you. But I have an older daughter as well. Maria. And when this older one was only two and a half years old, I still did not talk to her about apparitions. Because I thought she was too little to understand that. But one day while she was playing with her friend in the room, I heard this other girl saying to my daughter, My mom drives a car. And as I do not drive, my Maria remained quiet for a moment, and then she said, a big deal to drive a car. My mom talks to our lady every day. <laughs> so without saying a word, she comprehended. Because she saw what was going on in our home. That is why it is important for our children to see that for their parents, God is in the first place. And that when our children are grown up, when they leave our homes, they may try to live opposite from what we taught them. But without prayer, love, example, they will come back. Because we had put the roots. And our lady also must to go to Holy Confession at least once a month. Saying that there is no man on earth who doesn't have a need of a monthly confession. And I told you yesterday, and I would like to share this with others as well, as a sister. Since you have already done so much for our Heavenly Mother, you left your families, your homes. You set out on such a long journey. And all of that for mother's love. We'll do even that step. Confess. Our Lady says, Only pure heart knows how to open. And only pure heart knows how to receive gifts. This would be my advice for your pilgrimage to be complete. And pilgrimage cannot be complete if your heart is not open. And heart cannot be open if we are not confessed. 
This will be my sisterly advice. Our Lady asks Bible in our families. But when Our Lady gives a message to me, she does not explain that message to me. She gives it to me the same way as I give it to you. That seems like every one of you, I also have to pray in order to comprehend what is it that God wants to tell me. Those of you who have followed Our Lady's messages in every second day of each month, you could see that those messages were very long. And I could remember the message the way Our Lady said it word by word. Only within a few minutes right after that apparition. That is why always at the Blue Cross, as soon as Our Lady would leave us, I would dictate a message to Mickey who was waiting with a notebook and pen. Because later on when I would come back to my room to pray, I would be able to say what she spoke about. But I would not be able to repeat word by word anymore. And then I also needed after that message in a written form. And I prayed and read message. Trying to comprehend in such a way what is it that God wants from me. So when Our Lady says, bring back Bible, I believe that we all have Bible in our home. But I think that she desires a simple thing. Well, to open it every day. To read a few sentences, doesn't matter how much. But that the Bible lives in our family. And not just to say, yes, we do have a Bible, but when did we open it last time, I do not remember. This would be what came to my mind as the most important. It is for sure that I forgot so many things. That is why now you go on and ask. Everything that can help you to comprehend why are you here. And if I know, I will answer with all my heart. Just raise your hand when you have a question. No testimonies, just questions. Thank you. Yes, yes. Everything clear. <laughs> yes, Father. Thank you for what you're doing for us, Mariana. Thank you for uh, coming and speaking to us. Uh, just wondering, I know you injured your back and everything, can, at the end of this, can the priest gather and pray over you? It will be my honor. But I feel a little uncomfortable when you tell me thank you. Yes, I have back pain. My knees hurt. But I just, just did a couple of steps from my home. And you were those who did everything. You took such a long journey. And then you say thank you to me. Because when I look at all these messages, for her in the first place is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one God. And then you, priests. And then, the way I understood her, that is when she put her. And then where should I be? I think that she teaches me that I am below others. And not that I think that I am someone. And that someone should thank me. Only thanks be to dear God. Because he gave us mother. Because on one occasion she said to us, I have been with you for such a long time. And that shows you how much God loves you. Everything is God's love. And only thanks be to him. Secrets are secrets, and you're not going to tell us anything about the secrets.
to ask you. <laughs> Secrets are secrets. And I cannot talk about that. But I, I do not understand why are people afraid. Because we never said what the secrets are like. But they're about something good or something bad. I believe in Jesus. And I know that everything will be the way Jesus wants it to be. And I do not see the reason to fear. For example, one time I spoke to Italians. And there was that young man, maybe 30 years old, who constantly asked questions about secrets. And I really got tired of him. And I said to him, what would it mean to you if I tell you now that the first secret will take place or happen in 10 days and let's say you die tomorrow? He thought that I knew that he was going to die the next day. So he started running away. And I ran up to him to tell him that I had no idea where, when he was going to die. But that I just intended to tell him that we should be ready every single moment. Because who among us present here say for sure that we'll be alive tomorrow? And so what our lady has been teaching us is to be ready to come every single moment before God. And not to talk about future. God's will will be done. And our task is simply to accept it. But if I can tell you something beautiful, our lady said, my heart will triumph. And if the heart of our mother will triumph, it means that it will be good to us. Because my heart cannot be happy if my children are not happy. And just try to imagine our Heavenly Mother. And do not believe those who uh, uh, frighten you. That is not our faith. Our faith is love. Because Je Jesus is love and hope. Because true faith is not the faith that comes out of fear. Because when fear is gone, faith is gone as well. And then I don't need God anymore. Our faith comes out of love. And that is why do not be afraid. Put your lives in Jesus' hands. There is no safer place. Uh, well, first of all, we visited psychiatrists. <laughs> and psychiatrist was a Muslim. And she said, crazy are those who brought you here. That we were normal kids. <laughs> that all the examinations we had. I accepted all of that. Because I thought, if I do not, do not accept something, they will say, why? Well, she must be hiding something. So I practically accepted everything. Because if that would help people to accept Our Lady's messages, then that's okay. 
And if I endured communist interrogations, then I could even uh, endure examinations of doctors. What does our lady look like? <laughs> it is a very difficult question. Because <laughs> all my words are too poor to describe her beauty. I can try. She's a little taller than me. At least I assume so. Because I'm always kneeling. And she's always about a foot and a half above the ground. She has green dress and white veil. Or when I say gray, the dress, white veil, those are colors that look like gray and white. But that is not what we see or consider as gray or white. Because you know that in order to describe something, I have to have something to compare it with. She has black hair and it's long. Because as she has a veil, uh, we can see on the forehead a little bit up here and then below the veil on the right hand side. Which means that it is long. She has blue eyes. And she's wonderful. You see, I did not tell you anything. <laughs> I remember at uh, the beginning of her apparitions, we as children asked our lady a childlike question. We said, how comes that you are so beautiful? She smiled back to us and she said, said, I'm beautiful because I love. And she said, if you want to be that beautiful, then love. So when that apparition took place, visionary Yako was only nine and a half years old. And when our lady left us, he turned to the five of us and said, I think that our lady did not say truth. We all said to him, how do you dare to say that our heavenly mother doesn't say truth? And as a child, he said, yeah, but look at us missionaries. Some of us can love until the end of our lives, but we'll never be as beautiful as she says. <laughs> because he did not uh, understand what kind of beauty our lady spoke. Even today, he doesn't understand many things. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still late already. Um, this has to, but did, is Blessed Mother brought anybody like St. Joseph or other saints? Did our lady appear with anyone else like St. Joseph or saints? No, I only saw our lady. Well, <laughs> if on the first day, for example, of the apparitions, yeah. I saw that she was holding an infant baby in her arms. But I did not approach her on that day. I just could see from distance that she was holding the baby. I think that with this she intended to say, I'm coming as a mother and I'm bringing you salvation. And that is my son. There was communication and there was language, I guess. What language? What language our lady speaks, right? Well, if she wanted us to understand her at that time, she simply had to speak Croatian. But now, this question reminds me of something. What interesting, very interesting uh, old man who was 93 years old from Italy. And he asked me that same question. 
What language does our lady speak to you then? I said, well, Croatian. I said, do you know that during the World War II I was fascist? I said, well, we're not all perfect, I mean. I couldn't explain to him now at the age of 93 that it was wrong. And he said, well, now you understand Italian so well, why wouldn't she speak to you in Italian? I said, Grandpa, next time when Our Lady appears to me, I will tell her, Our Lady, I kindly ask of you to speak to me in Italian. <laughs> and he was like, thank you. <laughs> there are many interesting things like this. Yes. Hello. Um, Mariana, I was just wondering, we know about Our Lady's beauty and what language she was speaking. Can you post what age group Our Lady was in? Yeah. I'm really bad in estimating or guessing this. I, I think maximum 2021, my personal opinion. Yes? Someone Did the tone of all these messages and the way she speaks to Madonna changed uh, recently since all these events started taking place? <laughs> Our Lady is Mother. Mother who loves her children. Who doesn't judge her children. Who wants to change her children with love. And her voice is always full of love. And when I saw her, on every second day of each month, for example, I used to see her never happy. Because those apparitions were for those who had not come to know the love of God yet. And those are also her children, whom she would like all to be under her a motherly mantle. It was more times that I saw her sad, or an uh, expression on her face was like determined or decisive to help us. I would kind of describe it as as when we mothers began ourselves, when we are ready to do just anything for our children, and that we would never ever give up. That's the way I saw the expression on her face. one of us walking on this earth. 
But, but I never felt a need to touch her. Because when Our Lady is looking at you, you have everything. You feel loved, protected. You have no other desires. You just desire that she may keep on looking at you. Let me give you an example. I'm a mother, and as every other mother, I would give my life for my children. But when I am with her, I do not remember my children. I'm not aware of that they exist in those moments. I just wish that she may keep on looking at me and that I may keep on looking at her. I have no other desires. I know it probably would be a very innocent question, but I would like to know how do you feel, you? I know that you are a privileged a human being because you have this... Um, I would like to know how do you feel as a mother, as a wife? How does Miriana feel as mother, as wife, aside from being a right? I, I would like to know how do you cry, I'm watching you cry, but there's something that I would like to see more. You, for me, you are not human. <laughs> well, I live the way Our Lady wants me to live life. But do you feel, do you feel happy? Yes, I'm always happy. Always. Always. For me, Jesus is always in the first place. And if I have a problem or a cross, I always say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you because you saw that I am capable. But do not leave me alone. Because with you I can do it. Without you, I can't. And in everything I see God's love. And if a, a cross happens in my life, I see that later on it served for something greater. And I live like all other women. For example, Mirjana says, when I wake up, I prefer to wake up early, very early. I prefer to start my day with my God. To, to pray in silence alone. And then, like all other women, I turn on the washing machine, my bathroom cleaning, the dust off. My favorite time is when it's cloudy, when the sun hits the, the windows, then you can see all the dust. And when it's cloudy, no. Thank you. <laughs> I do everything like all other women, of course. Thank you. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Uh, I have to to uh, young adults, uh, children. What can you tell them? Like, to, I remember in the book you were always asking for signs so people can believe. And I remember you saying a story about your watch that the lady changed the watch or did something to it and then the police took it and you never got it back. I'm always telling those little stories to my children so to make them believe. But what can you tell them? What can you like give us an advice for young adults? Yeah. My advice would be in the first place, love. The children see that they are loved. And that to see from our own life that for us God is really in the first place. Because we cannot speak to our children about faith, about God, if they do not see that it is in the first place for us. Because they see everything. For example, just an ordinary example. If it was raining a lot outside, pouring rain, and if we say to our children, 
The weather is really bad today, so we don't need to go to Mass. We will go another Sunday. What will our children think? So it's not so important to go to Sunday Mass. We always have to show with our own example, with our own steps. One Italian lady, for example, told me, my son doesn't want to go to Mass. And I said, how old is your son? And she's like, he's seven. I really do not understand that. Maybe it's like that over there where you live, but here it's simply impossible. Because here parents would never ask their children, would you like to go to Mass? Because <laughs> which normal child at that age would say, yes, I want to? <laughs> Our question is only, which Mass do you prefer? Not, do you want to go to Mass? We should always and always use our example. To my children, for example, I always try to show God and God's love through example. With my moves, with my behavior, so that they could see that. And not that I preach to them and force them. The last question over there, please. What is the, what is the purpose of the the visions of the secrets, um, is it so that people pray about them? Um, and if so, then why haven't all of the visionaries received all tips? What is the purpose of secrets and why not all the visionaries have received yet all ten secrets, right? See, first our lady so who is smart enough to comprehend it immediately and who needs a little bit more time among <laughs> <laughs> six visionaries. <laughs> I mean, I, we have to joke. We have to smile. Because if we will not smile, we who claim that we want to get to know God's love all the more, then what will others do? That is why I always say, have a smile. Smile doesn't cost you anything, but gives so much. And we should be those who will share a smile with others. For example, if you're taking a walk through the street, down the street, I mean, if you feel miserable, alone, abandoned from everyone, and then you meet a person whom you do not even know, and passing by you, that person gives you a smile, you already feel better. You will say, there is hope. That is why we who claim that we want to get to know uh, the love of God all the more, we need to know how to have a smile. Hope. So the secrets are for hope, to bring hope. As I said, our lady said, my heart will triumph. We just need to try to follow her so that she may lead us and bring us to Jesus. Okay, one more question. Yes. Just wanted to know how your children, you said you had two daughters? Yes. So how, how have they dealt with the, the being your daughters? <laughs> they were born and they grew up in Medjugorje? Oh, thanks be to why do I say this? Because for people in Medjugorje, I am a Mirjana. Nothing special. Because we all together went through all of this, as we call it, Medjugorje. Many locals ended up in prison because of Medjugorje. Many of them suffered because of Medjugorje. So they look at me and approach me as our Miriam. For example, if I go to Mass, as I'm all broken as you can see, I have to sit. It means I would have to go much, much earlier in order to get a seat. 
If I'm in a shop, I wait in line as every other. So here I'm just Miriam. So even my children are treated in that way. That I fall from having something special. Because here everyone believes in God. For everyone, God is in the first place. Minina says, I would kindly ask of you. First of all, thank you. Thank you for saying yes to our lady. Then I would kindly ask of you to pray for me. Not for my health. That's not important. Because when I see young adults or children who are sick, that I'm ashamed to say that I have a problem at all. But I'm kindly asking of you to pray for me to be able to do what Our Lady expects from me in the right way. And I have prayed for you since the moment when you came to be able to comprehend why are you here and what is it that Our Lady wants from you. And when you pray for me, and I pray for you, then we will always be together. And that is what our Heavenly Mother wants. Her children to be together in prayer. And believe me, it is not important to see Our Lady with your physical eyes. It is important to see her with heart. Because when the heart is looking, everything is comprehended. That is why I pray for the gift to be able to see her with heart. And that depends only on you. Thank you. And especially thanks to these young adults and their youth and their purity, they are so beautiful. And let us pray to God that they may remain like that. Because as, as I said yesterday, the world remains on them. And when I see that, I comprehend why Our Lady said that her heart will try. We'll finish with one young Mary. And as we are so privileged to have priests with us, we can kindly ask them for blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Queen of Peace, pray for us.